It was only about three days ago that me and my brother got the S10 and we asked you what y'all wanted to see and y'all said y'all wanted a camera review. And I thought there are already like a thousand of them online. So why not make it a bit different? Why not compare it to a DSLR and see whether or not you still need a DSLR to be a content creator or a professional photographer or, okay, yeah, professional photography, you still need a DSLR, but if you really want that pro looking picture, do you still need a DSLR or is an S10 enough? Okay guys, so first up we got this potted plant which was taken under artificial lighting. So it's supposed to represent anything that's taken indoors. As you can see on a laptop even, it's very hard to distinguish which device took which picture because they're both really good quality. However, in terms of color accuracy, I'd say the Canon has the edge here. It definitely took more accurate colors, while the Samsung, it was kind of oversaturated, just a little bit, but to me, it looks pleasing. And if you weren't there and you don't know how accurate the picture was, I think people would just say the Samsung looks better here. Okay, so now we took a picture of the exact same subject, but this time with the ultra wide camera and as you can see, it's a lot less sharp. It's definitely noisier. For indoor scenes, I would definitely still prefer to use the normal wide lens instead of the ultra wide lens. Okay guys, so looking at the telephoto angle now, I can see that the sharpness of the edges is still intact, but the detail in the textures of the pot have kind of been lost. But yeah, I mean, overall the picture is still usable. Now what we're looking at is the same picture but taken in dimmer lighting. What I can tell you is the S10 picture definitely looks better. The S10 image looks to have less grain, less noise, but again, the colors of the Canon was actually more accurate. However, overall, I think I still prefer the S10. Taking a look at the ultra wide angle in low lighting is just sad because literally all detail in the subject has been lost. I mean, the, the noise in the picture is quite bad and in my opinion, maybe the camera is kind of unusable in low lighting scenarios. So definitely stick to the main camera here. The telephoto camera here is surprisingly better than what I was expecting it. It's better than the ultra wide camera for low lighting and sharpness is decent. I will not complain with this. Now looking at our next shot, I made my brother Dylan stand up against the sun so we could see how good the dynamic range was on the S10 compared to my DSLR. And what I can see is the S10 definitely brightens up uh, the shadows, like in the pants, you can see the color of the camo properly. Well, on the Canon, it's not, but at the same time, again, the S10 is a bit too saturated. The Canon has a more pleasing look to it and the S10 at the same distance from Dylan was a lot wider. Now looking at the live focus pictures on the S10, which is basically their version of portrait mode, there's definitely a better result of bokeh, which is blurring the background. And uh, that's because the lens I'm using on my Canon is the kit lens, which has a pretty high aperture, not low enough to create the background blurry thing that you see in a lot of professional pictures. And I think this is a pretty good representation on how budget DSLRs with their kit lenses would perform. Here we have another example of the Essence live focus mode. And honestly, I am really loving the effects. Like just look how accurate the edge detection is and how accurately the background is blurred, even between the arms. Like that is pretty impressive. Please ignore my armpit hair. <laughs> I was not aware that was visible. I could not achieve the background blur on the Canon because it was so bright outdoors, I could not get that aperture down enough. But the Canon picture isn't that bad. Uh, if you really wanted to achieve the background blur, you'd have to have an ND filter outdoors in such harsh lighting, considering you need the aperture to be lower. And I think that's enough for pictures. Let's move on to video, which is what I'm actually excited to see. 
first up as a vlogger I kind of thought doing a vlogging test first would be really interesting and looking at the footage you will see that there are a lot of key differences in between using a DSLR and the S10. Alright guys so this is me and Dylan vlogging with the with the front facing camera on the S10 and it's recording at uh, Ultra HD resolution which yeah. is not exactly 4K but way higher than Full HD which is what my Canon records at. Guys this is the vlogging test on the Canon 200D. As you can see the video is pretty good it's only Full HD though but uh, if you see any difference between the Ultra HD on the Samsung and the Full HD on my Canon let me know, let me know down in the comments below. After looking at that footage I think you guys will agree with me when I say that <laughs> it, it looked like I had someone rub sandpaper against my face for the S10 in comparison of course to this Canon because the Canon captured all the rough ugly textures in my face while the Samsung kind of just gave me a smooth looking face which is great but it's not accurate uh, and definitely more detail in the Canon. Same goes with the shirt. I mean there's more texture, more detail, more shadows, uh, definitely more shadows in the Canon uh, image while the S10 video kind of looks flat in comparison. Now something in favor of the SN is actually the stabilization. I really really love that. Uh, the Canon, I've noticed whenever I vlog, I kind of move my hand a bit whenever I try to be a bit dramatic and the S10 kind of omits that shake while the Canon doesn't. Looking at the audio from both these clips, obviously the Canon is better because I'm using an external mic. However, you can actually still use an external mic with the Samsung. It's just that you kind of have to build this entire setup in order to use the S10 as a vlogging rig. And uh, soon enough, I'm actually gonna be making a best smartphone vlogging setup. So if you're interested in that, uh, please subscribe and uh, stick around. But uh, anyways, moving on. This is the rear camera test and uh, hopefully the video should be amazing on the S10 because this is where it should really shine. Uh, obviously the DSLR is the same camera that I used for the vlogging test, so not, mu not much to fix there. I'm gonna walk out of frame and come back in and let's see how both focus. Yeah, so hopefully both focus is pretty quick there. And yeah. For the rear camera of the Samsung, what I have to say is I definitely prefer the contrast and colors for the rear camera as compared to the front camera. And it just looks to have a better overall image. I definitely prefer the rear camera for video. Okay, so now we are coming to the slow motion part of the video. Slow mo mode on the S10 records at 240 frames per second at full HD, I believe. While on the Canon, you can only record up to 60 FPS. Like that is the most it will go at full HD or at 720p or any other low resolution. Moving on to super slow mo, the best way I could explain super slow mo to you guys is you kind of feel like you're Quicksilver in X-Men. Really basically, Super Slow Mo feels like you're stopping time altogether and you're just seeing the nanoseconds pass by. It's, it's really an incredible thing. Only disadvantage of it is that you're recording at 720p. So yeah, you guys are probably gonna see it at a 50% crop. Guys, it's currently 6 o'clock in the morning and I just wanted to show you guys that I'm actually up at dawn because I was editing the entire night for you guys. Why? All in the name of Tech Tuesday, which is really stupid. It's, it's like a new thing on my channel and I usually only make videos about vlogs in Dubai but I was thinking of switching up so please leave a like on this video and uh, subscribe to the channel. It would mean the world to me if you did.